What's up guys, I'm going to do a video talking about the uh, last night's game against Newcastle United where we lost 3-0 and it's again a really disappointing night in terms of both performance and obviously result in terms of uh, the title race and what it does for our chances of retaining our title and getting the uh, 20th title uh, for in the league. So the team news from that night was uh, a sh quite a surprising one because Sir Alex Ferguson, like I said in the last video, had said last Friday that he was going to play uh, David De Gea in this one, but he opted to uh, uh, pick Anders Lindegaard ahead of him. And it was in a pre-match interview, it was quite surprising to see that Sir Alex was uh, so unusually open about his criticism for De Gea. He said that um, young David was a bit uh made a couple of mistakes in the cu last couple of days and and is more experienced and hopefully he'll deal with it better and i kind of disagree with him in certain ways because um yes Anders and Lindegaard is obviously 27 and is six years older than De Gea but um in terms of bigger match experience even in this season alone proves that De Gea has been um kind of been picked for the bigger occasions as you remember he playing against Chelsea uh City obviously it was a 6-1 defeat but still he got picked on that game and earlier in the season against Arsenal so um yeah it's kind of a strange kind of backlash from Selix for De Gea but I'm sure he'll bounce back and and as Lindegaard had a really solid game in goal anyway, he couldn't do a lot with the free uh, goal that Newcastle scored, but overall he was very solid with his catching and uh, his coming out to claiming crosses. And another return was Rio Fernand. He kind of had a, um, not his best game to say the least, he didn't provide the kind of experience and leadership that I think for, uh, Salex was expecting from him. And, you know, with the threat of Barr and Amiobi up front, that's what I think Salex was looking for when playing him and Phil Jones at the back. But, you know, Rio didn't really have his best game, but to, that could be expected because he had been out from the last game. But, yeah, um, kind of got dominated with Jones and him at the back. And so Salex probably will be looking for a bit of a better performance from Rio there. And in centre midfield, we had Carrick returning from his role at centre back, and Ryan Giggs returning from uh, uh, resting. And Ryan Giggs again performs brilliantly, and it's kind of uh, really hard to say this, but like he was the best uh, performer on the night, and that's really something to say that a 38-year-old performs um, the best when we're losing, and all the team should of took their responsibility in the game and really tried harder in order to get back in the game and Ryan Giggs you can't doubt his effort ever because he he does that have that that, that drive and determination to go and try hardest even though it looks uh, like a dead end and yeah I have to give credit to Ryan Giggs there for really uh, driving the team on when we needed it Unfortunately, like that didn't come off in the final third, but again, you can't doubt the man's integrity. Up front, we had Wayne Rooney and Dimitar Berbatov up front. And Wayne Rooney, again, just like Rio, missing the last match because of some reason with him having a night out, etc. Uh, di again, didn't really have the best game. Really poor, in fact, because um, earlier on, one of the chances Ryan Giggs made for him um, with a great through ball, Wayne Rooney kind of just half heartily stabbed at it, and it was really strange how he tried to finish the uh, the ball. I think it might cross his mind that he might have been offside, but again, he tried a, a little cheeky chip with uh, the outside of the right foot, but but that didn't come off. And Dimitar Berbatov um, kind of played all right. He started well. He hit a post early on when it was him headering into uh, David Santon's uh, midriff and then it deflected onto the post. And yeah, it was unlucky from that point. But Berbatov, you know, if you're going to get the service up to him, then he's obviously going to play well. But if not, then he could be quiet for the rest of the game. As for the rest of the performance, it was overall the performance was really, really dull and even 
worse than the Blackburn game, to say the least. I mean, in the final third, we didn't really have a lot to offer Newcastle for them to worry about. From the first whistle, I knew something was wrong. I mean, um, we started quite well within the first 10 minutes. We were kind of making half-hearted chances, but you could really see the threat of Barr up front for Newcastle. I mean, every time he got the ball, you knew something was can happen, either him playing the ball out wide and resulting in a crossing where he could uh, maybe beat Jones in a aerial challenge. And, yeah, it, he caused us problem all night, if I'm honest. Another player that was quite disappointing was uh, Nani. He and Rooney seem to like have gone off the boil since the Fulham game. Um, but that's before that, I thought they were both returning to form really well with uh, great performances in both the QPR and uh, obviously the Fulham game. But yeah, it just they weren't seeing themselves last night. And Nani had a poor game against David Santon. Didn't really have the kind of uh, drive that he usually have and the trickery to go around past defenders of ease. He kind of made himself very easy for Santon to defend with and really showed him too much of the ball for uh, him to get worried about. So again, that doesn't help when one of your uh, star players on the wing don't perform and relies on the middle. And that probably why it has highlighted to a lot of people again the kind of shortage of creativity in the midfield. You can't expect um, Ryan Giggs to go on forever, and Carrick he's, he he could do it. He has an eye for the pass, but um, when you really have to have that drive, um, Michael Carrick is not that kind of player that I think suits that role. He's kind of a more protection and adds uh, a shield for the back four. Um, just give an example, not uh, any rumours and stuff like that and not confirming anything is a, a person like Wesley Snyder who say he would play uh, in the centre midfield obviously but it will be more of a diamond where he'd be pushing on and leaving Michael Carrick uh, with the back four and you know with uh, Wesley Snyder he has a shot on him with his right foot and you know he that probably why a lot of people are seeing how Snyder could fit into our system with uh, gigs coming out of the side uh, now and again. And Snyder will be that main man who would p provide the driving force for midfield when the uh, attacking two are not offering uh, much in terms of scaring defenders. And talking of uh, set pieces and creative midfielders, I mean, Johan Kabai's second goal for Newcastle was really second to none I mean if you have to see this uh, free kick for yourself I mean it was like 30 yards out and he bullet the ball right into the you know intersection between the post and the crossbar it was really a um, miracle if any goalie could have saved that I mean Lindegaard I think he's got these slightest of fingertips to it and tipped it onto the bar just but you know f as soon as I saw it I knew we were in trouble and um the Newcastle players weren't sure because it bounced straight off the roof of the net and then bounced straight out. But yeah, you could definitely see that it went over and the reaction of the United players didn't help. And I guess that's uh, kudos to the players for not uh, protesting and stuff. But yeah, it was a world-class goal from Kabai. He's been performing good for Newcastle and yeah, there's just no way you can say, oh, it was... Lindner guards his fault or whatever. You have to take your hat off and say that it was a, a good goal from Kabai. And the last goal that we conceded was uh, Phil Jones with, uh, and a mix-up with Lindergaard where um, it was a long ball. Phil Jones um, kind of tried to head it back to Lindergaard but, um, and he hit it knee and then went in. But Lindergaard, he kind of um, was rushing off to get the ball and the understanding there was a bit off between the two and it raises a lot of question now where Alex uh, should be sticking to one goalkeeper because you know maybe if the Hale had been playing and because Phil Jones know how he plays he that's why he probably headed it back expecting him to have stayed on the line but Lindegaard is a different keeper tried to come out for it but didn't come off and yeah Mark Bosnich the you know the goalkeeper wants off United. He said that Selic now need to kind of stick with one man because it does 
I think unsettles uh, the keeper and the defenders because um, you need to have that rhythm within the play and have the solid and um, backbone to your team in order to be quite successful. And that's what happened when um, with Newcastle, for example, because they have Cruel, uh, Colicini in the mid centre of defence, Johan Kabai and Czech Chiyote and then Bar up top. And that has been a really successful backline for them because Krull has been excellent all through the season and he's really give them that confidence that they can go on and bomb on attack without having too much um, worry about the back and that he can pull off saves that will, um, you know, put and give them a chance in scoring goals and stay in the game. So I think that's a, a really important decision for Salex coming up now where he has to decide between De Gea and Lindegaard. So overall, very disappointed, but I must insist that we are only three points behind City and it was the same gap before we went into Christmas uh, this Christmas period and I wouldn't be surprised that Salex won't buy in the January transfer window. I know that um, a lot of people say, oh, we, we lack a bit and we need centre fields, but remember Tom Clary's coming back very, very, very soon and... I'm even thinking like if City had 11 players out would they be in the same spot as us and my my question to that is probably no I mean they don't have a, a stronger squad as uh, we do and I think it's been a miracle how we stayed as close as we have to them so yeah don't don't panic guys and I think that we we know that uh will get stronger in the second half of the season and hopefully they'll be continuing the trend this year and I think again Zalex needs to decide who's our number one either it'll be De Gea or Lindegaard so leave your comment below for your opinion on that so that's it for this video uh, please rate comment subscribe cheers guys